Did you know that the global sugar production hits a whopping 181 million metric tons every year? And guess what? 32% of that comes from sugar beet. But let me tell you, producing such an enormous amount of sugar is no easy feat. It used to be a labor-intensive process, but thanks to cutting-edge automation and technology, sugar beet processing is now faster and cheaper than ever before. How sugar beet is transformed on a massive scale into those tiny crystals that we sprinkle on our cereals and desserts? What are the secrets behind the processing of this humble root vegetable? Join us as we delve into the transformation of sugar beet, a humble root vegetable, into the irresistible, transparent sweet crystals that we all love. Get ready to be amazed by the fascinating process that takes place, step by step. It's a journey that you won't want to miss. The sugar beet is a taproot that resembles a parsnip and is white in color. It employs photosynthesis in its leaves to produce sugar, which is then stored in its root. With a sugar content of roughly 16%, the plant undergoes an extraction procedure to isolate the sugar from the rest of the plant. Side note, sugar beet in moderate climates and is a preferred substitute for sugarcane in North America and Europe. Sugar beet is harvested during autumn and winter, where a rotor beater cuts off or tops the head of the beet, which is then left in the field. A beet loader then pulls the beets out of the earth and into a truck, where the beet is driven via truck to a processing plant. Upon arrival at the processing plant, sugar beets undergo an elaborate process that involves several machines to extract sugar. First and foremost, the beet is tested for quality and sucrose content to determine its usability in the manufacturing process. Once approved, the beet is placed on conveyor belts that transport the beet to a revolving drum showered with water, where rocks and gravel are separated and sink. This process is vital as sugar beet grows in the ground and is therefore much dirtier than sugar cane when it arrives at the factory. The stones are then sold to landscapers or road builders as a byproduct. The beets are then washed in a beet washer which removes all excess soil, while a magnet removes any metal fragments. The clean beets roll down towards the slicers, where they are sliced into cossettes that resemble small french fries. This opens up the beet, increasing the surface area and allowing for the sugar to be more easily extracted. Side note, did you know that the existence of sugar beet was first alluded to by the 16th century scientist Olivier de Serre? The beet strips are then transported into a large hot water tank, where they are soaked to begin to break their cell membranes, allowing the sucrose to be extracted by osmosis. This occurs because the cossettes of beet have a higher sucrose content than the water surrounding them, making the sucrose diffuse into the water. At this stage, a brown sugary pulp is formed, entering into a diffusion chamber that extracts as much sugar as possible from the cossettes by running them up against the flow of water. The chamber is typically filled with a counter-current flow of warm water. The mixture is then passed through a pressurized sieve, where the liquid is separated from the solid residue. Once the sugary liquid is extracted, it is ready for purification. The juice is passed through several stages of treatment to remove impurities, such as calcium and magnesium salts, organic acids, proteins, and waxes. The first step is carbonatation, where the juice is mixed with slaked lime to neutralize the acids and precipitate the impurities. The precipitated impurities form a sediment that is removed using a filter or centrifuge. As the sugar beet juice continues on its journey, the next step is sulfitation, a critical process that uses sulfur dioxide gas to prevent bacterial growth and clarify the juice even further. Not only does this process stop any unwanted bacteria from growing, but it also bleaches the juice's color resulting in a beautifully clear and lighter product that is sure to satisfy any sweet tooth. The juice then undergoes another round of carbonatation to remove any stubborn impurities, followed by a thorough filtration process to ensure that no solids remain. Once the juice is clarified, it's time to transform it into the concentrated, sugary goodness that we all crave. The clarified juice is boiled in a series of vacuum pans slowly but surely evaporating the water and increasing the sugar concentration. As the syrup heats up to about 240 degrees Fahrenheit, tiny crystals begin to form. Once cooled, the crystals start to grow, gradually forming a thick and luscious slurry. 
This slurry is then separated in a centrifuge, ensuring that every last drop of molasses is removed, leaving only pure and delectable sugar crystals. But the process doesn't end there. The pulp that was left behind during the extraction process is pressed to remove any remaining juice. The resulting residue is then dried and turned into pellets that are sold as nutritious animal feed. So not only does this refining process provide us with our beloved sugar, but it also generates a valuable byproduct that can benefit the cattle and other animals. The raw juice from sugar beets is then pumped into the purification process where the real magic happens. This is where impurities are removed, making way for the delicious sweetness of the sugar. By adding milk of lime and carbon dioxide, the carbonation process kicks in. The combination of CO2 and milk of lime produces calcium carbonate, which collects all the non-sugars, effectively clearing most of the impurities as it leaves the sugar juice. And to ensure only the purest of the pure sugar is left, decoloring ionic exchangers are also added in some cases. Now, the residual juice goes through a filtration process using a frame or plate press. The pressure squeezes out the sugar juice, leaving behind a thin juice and solid waste. The waste, known as lime solids, holds all the impurities and is spread onto farmland, providing a sustainable byproduct, fertilizer. But wait, there's more. The resulting thin juice still has a relatively low sugar content, so it's boiled to increase the sugar solids concentration from 16 to 65 percent. Then, through a six-step evaporation process, the syrup thickens as the water boils off, leaving behind an even thicker liquid. And finally, the crystallization process. This is where the thick juice transforms into beautiful sugar crystals. The thick juice, with its high sugar content, is ready to become the sugar crystals that we all know and adore. This is where the real magic happens as the juice goes through a four-stage crystallization process. Firstly, the juice is passed through a pressurized vacuum system called a centrifuge at a low temperature. To kickstart the formation of sugar crystals, seed crystals are added to the mix. The juice is then cooled and evaporated in a complex process that allows the crystals to form and grow. Next, the sugar crystals, now with a fudge-like consistency, are put through centrifuges not once, not twice, but three times. This rigorous process separates the sugar crystals from any remaining liquid, leaving us with pure crystal sugar. But what about the byproduct? As with any manufacturing process, there is always a byproduct, but fear not, beet molasses has an important use too. This fudge-like substance is a natural animal feed packed with essential vitamins and minerals. Alternatively, it can be distilled into alcohol, used for a range of purposes from cooking to cleaning. And now, the moment we've all been waiting for, the sugar crystals are finally ready to be packaged and distributed to eager consumers. Sugar is typically packaged in processing plants using automated machinery. First, the sugar is refined and processed to remove impurities and create a uniform product. Then, the sugar is loaded onto conveyor belts or other equipment that transport it to the packaging area. In the packaging area, the sugar is measured and dispensed into bags, boxes, or other containers using high-speed machines. The containers are then sealed and labeled with product information such as the type of sugar, weight, and expiration date. Finally, the packaged sugar is loaded onto pallets and prepared for delivery to distributors, wholesalers, and retailers. The packaging process is carefully controlled to ensure that the sugar is clean, safe, and of consistent quality. These crystals are dried with hot air and gathered, ready to be used in our favorite recipes. From the moment the sugar beet seed is planted to the final stages of crystallization, the journey has been nothing short of incredible. It's remarkable to think that such a simple ingredient has gone through such a complex process to become the sweet addition to our food and drink. So next time you add a spoonful of sugar to your tea or coffee, take a moment to appreciate the hard work, dedication, and ingenuity that has gone into creating that sweet, satisfying flavor. It's truly remarkable what can be achieved when science and nature work together. It's important to note that the water used in the process up until this point is kept and used for further heating on site, managing resources and energy efficiently. 
The entire process not only creates a delicious product, but is also environmentally friendly, making it a win-win for all. We want to hear from you. Do you prefer sugar that comes from sugar cane or the one from sugar beet? Share your thoughts with us in the comments below and don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. We can't wait to see what you think.